What up guys, Eric here from Racing Ram Fam, and today we're going to be looking at all these filters here to really see if there's an aftermarket oil filter replacement for a Viper OE oil filter. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna be cutting apart these four right here aftermarket oil filters. I already have a video comparing the 090 oil filter and to the Viper oil filter. If you guys wanna check that out, I'll have the link in the description below. But in today's video, we're really gonna be comparing these four aftermarket oil filters to our OE Viper filter. Uh, a couple of these filters were generously donated for the making of this video. The k and I got from my guy, Andy at Parts Online Network, so go check him out. Uh, the Wix filters I got from a subscriber uh, named Jonathan. Thank you, John. Thank you, Andy, for the oil filters. I hope I do a good job describing them and cutting them apart. And then we have this Mobile One oil filter over here that I bought because I had a poll on the Facebook pages of what oil filter you guys would like to see besides the Mopar 090 and the Viper filter of course and the Mobile One one by leaps and bounds so that's what I got right here. So we're going to start off this video a little bit differently than the other video. We're actually going to describe how an oil filter works right now but right away I already have this guy cut apart so we're going to zoom in here and show you guys what an oil filter is all about and how they work. Alright guys, so we got the OE Viper filter right here. This is an 836 uh, OE Viper filter. This is what Dodge recommends to go on your Viper engine. So we're going to open this up and really take a look at how an oil filter works and you guys can take a better look at what the inside of these Viper filters look like. Of course the Viper filters come in this nice packaging which I love, and you got this nice lid. As you guys can see, this filter is already cut apart. All right, so the first thing you guys see with an oil filter is you have the rubber O-ring. This rubber O-ring actually seals the oil filter to the engine block. Very simple design, they all should be okay. No one should screw that up. The second part you guys see here is all these holes around here and one giant hole with a thread in the center. What the center hole does is actually threads onto the motor. So when oil goes into the oil filter, it goes on these outside holes, it goes through the filter, and then it comes out this inside hole. And that's how the oil flow through a filter goes. And then when you cut one of these apart, the first thing you do is you're gonna take this lid off, and the first thing you see right here is the drain back valve. And what that drain back valve does is it keeps oil in this filter at all times. So when you first start your car, this thing's already filled with oil, so you have a prime ready to start your vehicle so you're not dry starting it. And then you guys see the filter itself. Don't mind this cut right here. I tried cutting these apart way too far than I should have, but so yeah. So as you see right here, yes, this is the paper element that actually filters the oil itself. It is pretty simple design. It looks like an air filter kinda. On the bottom here, we have a bypass valve, and what a bypass valve does is actually bypasses the filter and goes straight into your engine, unfiltered oil. It uses it on extreme cold starts, or if this filter element is so plugged that it can't get oil through here, and it doesn't want to starve the motor of oil pressure or oil, so it actually uses this bypass valve down here to bypass the filter. Then we have a little spring down here. All this springs for is for the drain back valve, just to keep pressure on it, on this lid, so you guys keep that oil in that filter. And then that's how an oil filter works, guys. It's pretty simple. A couple things will be different between all these oil filters. Um, one thing that will be pretty similar and that I wouldn't really care about is the holes and the center hole. All the center holes are gonna be exactly the same because all these filters all these filters I have right here are interchangeable. They're all a 090 base oil filter, but they all have different internals, locations of bypass valves, the filter elements, how they're held together, and that's what we're really gonna take a look at and price-wise. Oh, and even case thickness, because we have a lot of oil pressure in our Viper motors, and I know these filters, these ones right here, are a lot thicker than our 090 competitor right here. And when you guys have 90 to 100 pounds of oil pressure, like we do in our Viper motors, you really don't want this thing to swell up and blow up because that would be 
a loss of oil extremely fast. All right guys, we got this little sheet I wrote up here to show you guys a little bit of the differences and just to keep track, because we have a lot of oil filters we are gonna go over. So the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is just me going over the Viper filter and all the stuff I have on here listed out that I personally think is important, which I am not an engineer, guys. I am just a mechanic that owns a tool that can cut oil filters apart, and I sit here and talk about them and show you guys. So you are really the dependent on what oil filter you wanna run on these engines. I'm not gonna tell you guys which ones. So the first thing we're gonna go out is the amount of oil feed holes we have in the filter. So we're gonna take our Viper filter here, and we have, so these are the feed holes right here, and on the Viper one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna take down and write six of them right here and then the second part we got right here is the drain back valve material which in the viper filter is rubber so we're going to take that and we're going to write rubber and then oil filter element we have a paper filter element in these viper filter so we're going to write down paper and then how the filter element is held together here we have a crimp fitting so we can write steel crimp and then on the bypass valve location we have it on the viper filter it is on the bottom of the oil filter and I will explain more why these things are positive and why these things are negative later in the video and then the bypass valve spring here, we have an actual coil spring. And then we have case thickness, which we have my digital caliper here. So we'll take a quick measurement here. So we got about 21 thousandths. So we'll write that down. And then last but not least, we want packaging, how these come in, cardboard box, like the rest of them, so we're not gonna write that down. But the Viper filter does come with a lid on it, and it does come in a plastic bag. So I'm going to write down lid and plastic bag. All right, so we're gonna start cutting apart all these oil filters over here and we're gonna start writing stuff down so stay tuned and we'll go over all the findings at the end of the video all right guys we got all these oil filters cut apart and we got them all laid out to which ones which we got the Viper filter right here we have the KNN filter right here we have the Wix filter right here and Wix XP and then mobile one and we got them laid out in the way they come apart and what's in the parts and we're gonna go over them briefly here a little bit more in depth than I did before. I kind of just talked about stuff and kind of threw out my own opinions, but now we're really gonna go over uh, which one I think is the best oil filter for your Viper engine. All right, the other thing I added too was price on all these guys, which we'll go over afterwards too. So uh, they all come in a cardboard box packaging wise. The only thing difference is the Mopar Viper filter. We have a lid and a plastic bag for the filter. So we really keep all that debris out of there and packaging wise. Uh, on the lids, they all have six holes, feed holes, not much difference there. Uh, going to the drain back valves, the only one that's different is the Viper filter, and we have this black rubber compared to this red rubber. Um, the only thing that I think is weird is these all have this like powdery dust on them, all these red ones do, and that might be because they're just chilling in a cardboard box compared to the Viper filter, which is wrapped up and neatly. Uh, on the Wix, guys, we got some weird little adapters. The one's a bypass valve, and one's just an adapter for the oil filters, which is really weird because if you sit them down here, you see we don't have any kind of rubber sealant or anything. We're just sheet metal to sheet metal, and it's kind of sloppy. It's not a very precise fit, so you can definitely have some oil sneak by there, which I am not a fan of. All right, going on to the oil filter elements, we got on the Viper one, we have a paper element, and it is crimp together. Going over to the KNN, we have a paper element as well, but this one is a little bit different. It is like sewed together. I don't know if you guys can see that, but we have like stitching in there. Coming over to the Wix filter here, we have another paper element, but this guy is glued together. 
Coming over to the Wix XP filter here, we have a little bit different than the rest of them. We have more of this cloth style filter element that is crimped together, just like our Viper filter over there, which I really like. Coming over to our mobile one, we have a paper filter element, and this guy is glued together right there, as you guys could see. Uh, coming down to the springs that hold up for our bypass valves, we have coil spring on the Viper filter on the KN. We have a sheet metal spring on the Wix filters. We have both the same exact coil springs. And then on the mobile one, we have a sheet metal spring. Coming back to the Viper filter here, we're going to go over bypass valve locations. So I really like this Viper filter due to the placement of that bypass valve because I'm not an engineer but just my thoughts in general is if you have let's just say because on these Viper motors I know it's about 75 to 100 psi of oil pressure you have 100 psi of oil pressure beaming down on all these little holes right here and on this spring and as if that oil pressure is overcoming the spring pressure before it goes through the filter you're going to get un filtered oil straight into your engine and go into your bearings. Unlike the Viper filter, which it has to actually go past the filter, you get what I'm saying? This one can go straight in instead of going through the filter. It actually has to physically go past the filter before we get to the bypass valve, which this might be a stronger spring for the bypass valve too compared to that spring right there. On the Viper filter, we have it nice smack dead at the bottom. On the KNN, we have it right up at the top here. On the Wix, we have it right up at the top, which is removable too. On the other Wix, Wix XP, we have it nice on the bottom, just like our Viper filter over there. And then on the Mobile One, we got it also on the bottom, but it is removable and it is part of the sheet metal spring, which again, just like our Wix guys over here, isn't a very precise fit. It is just a sheet metal spring, sheet metal stamped out piece that sits together with no rubber, no nothing, just metal on metal. Coming down to the case thickness, on the Viper one, we had a 21 thousandths thickness. On our KNN here, we had a 22 thousandths thickness. On our Wix here, we had a 16 thousandths. On our Wix XP, we had a 14 thousandths, and on our mobile one, we had a 21 thousandths. So guys, um, you guys can be the judge of these. A couple things that just kind of throw me off and I'm just very confused about are these Wixes and this mobile one, of why they would put these kind of sheet metal pieces that you can have leaks by. I really don't like that, and I really wouldn't run either three of these filters. I do like the Wix XP filter element and I do like the bypass valve location. I just really wish they would get rid of this adapter at the top of the filter. I think this would be a better filter than the Viper filter actually. If this guy was attached to here and then if we had some packaging to go over this to keep all that debris out of there. Um, case thickness wise, I didn't like the Wix because it was dirt thin, so was the other Wix. The other three, these two and the mobile one, we had nice thick filter cases. Uh, KNN, one weird thing was for this guy, we had like welds, and I think that's where they fail a lot of times, where they start leaking out of. Uh, KNN bypass valve location, I didn't like that. Um, the mobile one, how the bypass valve is a sheet metal thing, spring two, and if you take a look at here, you only could have oil flow from here to here which I mean you shouldn't have flow through the bypass valve but some oil flow is better than no oil flow so I mean if that filter element is so plugged up this guy's so plugged up um, having no oil pressure is worse than having oil pressure so having filter oil is way better than having non-filter oil but if you can't have filter oil it's still better to have non-filter oil than no oil at all so that's one thing about this guy, I don't know if that's really a big deal, that it just has that little bit of sizing. And on our Viper guy, just comparing it, we have all this oodles of room to get to that bypass valve compared to the mobile one. All right, so now we're gonna come over and talk about prices on these guys. So 
our Viper filter right here, this MO836 Viper oil filter coming in at $14.95. Um, if you guys want to go pick up one of these, you can go check out my guy Andy at Parts Online Network. I get 10% off. You guys get 10% off using the promo code RACINGRAMFAM at the checkout. So yeah, you get those at a really good steal and deal. The KNN we had at $9.98. The Wix filter we came coming in at $9.97. The Wix XP filter we had coming in at $11.61. And then last but not least we had the Mobile One, the most expensive filter we got here at $15. 43 in my opinion guys i really would stick with this guy but i really had fun cutting these all apart thank you guys for donating these filters and again i really appreciate it i appreciate the views i hope you guys stay subscribed to the channel i did have a little sneak peek of what's going on with my channel right here this little turbo just chilling out and if you watch my last video you guys will see what that is going on or what it's going to be going on so guys, I hope you liked the video. Again, I am not an engineer. I am a mechanic that owns a tool that can cut oil filters off and people are keep giving me oil filters so I'm going to keep cutting them open and keep giving you my opinion of what one's the best one and what one's the worst one and which one I would just throw away and never even touch. <laughs> but thank you for watching again. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys have a good holiday, a good Christmas, a good New Year's, a good everything. And I hope you guys subscribe, comment, like the video, tell me why you didn't like the video, tell me why I'm dumb and I don't know anything about oil filters, which I probably don't. And as always, keep it boosting.